Hey everyone, it's John Delin. Uh, we are here in Derby, Kansas, and we are uh, just a couple of minutes away from Natasha Helfer's uh, stake center in Derby, Kansas for her membership council or disciplinary council or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's been definitely an emotional day. There have been a group of about 10 or 15 of us gathered at uh, Natasha and Andy's house. And um, Natasha has just been processing uh, the day. So a lot of a lot of people gathered, a lot of people showing love um, and support. And it, it has really just been friends showing up and listening to Natasha share her thoughts and feelings and um, very heartfelt, very emotional. And so uh, we're a few minutes away from the Stake Center now. Again, I'm John DeLynn. This is Mormon Stories Podcast. And we are continuing the long tradition of turning disciplinary councils into sacraments. Uh, for so long, uh, you know, when I was at BYU 1993, uh, they used disciplinary councils to silence uh, scholars and activists. And uh, I watched uh, Mormon activists and scholars go silent for 10, 15 years after 1993. Um, and so when I started Mormon Stories podcast and got a sense that at some point they were going to start excommunicating uh, scholars and activists who are critic on the internet, critical on the internet, that we were not going to just kind of keep it silent, keep it secret, uh, but instead we were going to live stream it and celebrate, hold vigils, film them, and uh, shine a huge, big, fat, beautiful spotlight on this barbaric process. Uh, I've been to, you know, um, I've been to Sam Young's Disciplinary Council. I was at Bill Reel's Disciplinary Council. I was at my own. I was at uh, Cody and Leah Young's Disciplinary Council. There are several other that uh, I'm not thinking of now, but um, this is Natasha Helfer's uh, disciplinary council. Uh, a year or two ago, the church changed its policies, no longer calling them disciplinary councils, calling them membership councils, no longer calling them excommunications, calling them, I don't know, membership rem removal. And of course, uh, uh, we wondered if that meant that they were going to uh, stop doing these. Uh, what I'm hearing is there is now uh, an increase uh, after COVID. I'm aware of five, six, or seven different disciplinary councils that have been um, brewing. So it looks like there may be a purge uh, ahead. And uh, we'll be talking about that in the days and weeks uh, and months ahead. But we are now here in, um, in Derby, Kansas. And it looks like there is a group. There's policemen here. We're in the stake center parking lot. There's police. And um, if you look ahead, there is a large gathering of supporters. And everybody's here to support Natasha. I'm going to say at least 40 people are here now, maybe 50. And what we're going to be doing for the next um, for the next hour or two is we're going to be interviewing people and uh, talking to them and we're going to be honoring Natasha <clears throat> and we're going to be hearing from her before she goes in and um, we're really glad that you guys could join us. Um, I want to ask a quick favor of everybody. Please share this right now on social media. Please share this feed whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, please share this uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Find ways to share it. We want as many people as possible to be able to know about this and to hear about it and to support Natasha, to show up for her and to witness for her. Um, and to show Natasha our love, but we also want this to go down in the history books as yet another um, medieval barbaric uh, disciplinary council where the Mormon church excommunicates um, where the Mormon church excommunicates its uh, most devoted members uh, those that love and provide support for those who are struggling 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and hop out, guys. I'm going to leave my bag here for now. I'll leave my bag here for now. <clears throat> Hi, guys. So here's the crowd. So are they speaking? You guys. So is there is the program started? Okay, okay. Do you guys want to be on the camera or not? Do you care? What? Close what? What do you? Oh no, no. This is open. This is open. No, no, no. Hi guys. Hi guys. All right. Hello. Hi guys. Hi guys. I'm filming. I hope that's okay. What's your name? Scott. Hey Scott. We met in Denver. Hi, Denver. Hi, Scott. Uh, oh, an Oasis. Yeah. How's it going? Are you with, with Kansas City Oasis? We are. Oh, that's so great. Hi, guys. Now, were you guys uh, former Mormons, current Mormons, former never Mormons, never Mormons? Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't miss this for Natasha. Tell us why you're here. Well, Natasha came and spoke with us uh, a couple of times at Oasis. So yeah, she know, sure did. She, you know, yeah, that's where I saw you guys. We just love. We just love the way that she cares about okay. people. Yeah. And so we want to show our support. That is so nice for you guys. Give me a fist bump. That is so nice for you guys to show up for her. <laughs> Thanks for coming. We'll talk later. Okay. So Sam Young is talking. Hi guys. I'll be back. Hey Kyle. Uh, I'll say hi. Hello. Are you are you filming? Are you streaming? No, Sam's got it all. So we are streaming. Oh, okay, okay. Sam's got it. Sam's yeah. got a feed. Hi guys. How's it going? Good to see you. I'll be back. And that's how I get fired in the belly. There are a thousand stories on our website, protectlbschildren.org, that most people will tell me, Sam, I can read ten of those stories, and I want to go through all. To see the shame that our children were exposed to. You know, these questions alone cause great shame, inappropriate shame. <laughs> that often leads to self loathing. So we're teaching our kids to loathe themselves, to hate themselves over masturbation, over having sex as a child. <clears throat> it leads to problems with regards to sex period going into your marriage now you want we really want our children to struggle with sexual relationships in their marriage well that's what this leads to when you shame them about sex and kids suicide ideation at least 50 percent of the children of the adults who are writing about their children child experience said that they thought about suicide about 30 percent attempted suicide and there are stories written by parents of their children that actually succeeded in their suicide attempts. All this because of the horrendous policy that is in the church that <clears throat> of taking children behind closed doors, allowing sexual questions to be asked. Now, we could look at and say that's a bad thing for that child. Yeah, it's a horrendous. Shouldn't we all be concerned about all children, whether we're a Mormon, whether we're not a Mormon? We should be concerned about all children. Well, that's that child, okay? I can turn away from them. That's that family. I can turn away from them. But it gets even worse than that. Now, you look at the, the ills we have in our society, like addiction, like incarceration, uh, abuse, uh, child abuse, a lot of those things.
actually, 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 that's not true. I would Plus prefer for my husband to go first. Plus he was soon to be my very ex-husband, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make that clear. Six go in, Wait, one go back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, uh, let me. Are Let's... you putting your mask on? Okay, okay but we off. need. Um, taking it off. We need Andy in this. Too. Andy. Yes, oh, I thought he was right there. Well, he's coming. <laughs> One in there. All right, are we all in? The people I love. <laughs> all right, thank you. We'd like to ask you to take the camera off the property, please. What's that? Would you please take the camera off the property? Okay. Thank you. church for great reasons to continue to be able to uh, minister to help um, families children who are struggling with issues that come out of um, that come out of the church and it's different because she's female oh boy it's different because she's female absolutely yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I think it's probably going to be a lot different experience for Natasha okay now I forgot where I was at uh, <laughs> protecting, the protecting the children. Okay, what we're doing to children, what the Mormon Church is doing to children, leads to inappropriate shame, self-loathing. Uh, Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say why you're here? Do you want to say hi to the yeah. right, come over, come over Okay, does anybody want to say why they're here to support Natasha? If anybody wants to come, say hi. Anybody want to? Hi, guys. Do you want to say hi to the live stream? Is it, is it facing us? Or we... Yeah, yeah, it's facing hello, hello. you. Hi, guys. My name's Nisha. I'm Kyle. Nisha. I think I recognize you guys. Yeah. You might. Your tell voice us, sounds really familiar. Tell us who you are. Uh, so we are challenge.faith on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, and we came to support Nat Natasha because um, we were almost in a similar situation and we uh, we love what Natasha is doing. What do you mean that you're almost in a similar situation? So we received our own uh, notice from our state president, which actually has the same uh, regional representative as Natasha. Uh, with kind of all the same implications that either we uh, stop making content that we do, um, we face a disciplinary council or membership council, um, or we, we resign. And that just happened last week. So just uh, we got our notice the day that Natasha kind of informed everyone that she would be coming here. Uh, and we chose, we chose to resign um, after that first meeting with our bishop because we have, we have young kids and, uh, and we didn't want to put them through what that might mean. Um, to see us in that kind of situation and try to explain to them why we were why we were doing that. Um, so, but it's it's still sensitive to us because it was uh, it was a really hard thing to face and to have to. to you know. it's, it's hard to be put on someone else's timeline, right? When your faith journey or your spiritual journey, it's so specific to you. 
And so it's hard when someone else wants to interject themselves and tell you how you should be doing it or what you need to be believing or how you need to be acting. That's not okay. So that's one reason we're here also to support her is just to let her know like, this is your journey and I hope that she is able to do it the way she wants to. And I just, yeah, we love her. We love all that she stands for and how hard she's trying. What has Natasha meant to you guys personally? Anything? Do you guys, honestly, you followed her work or? Um, just honestly more recently, um, we really struggled with the purity culture in the church. And so we really hope to teach our kids a whole different way than what we were taught. I don't want my kids to feel shame for doing natural things that their bodies were designed to do. I want them to know a healthy way of how to treat their bodies, love their bodies, to know their bodies. And she she does that, she teaches you those things. So. Right, and I think she does an amazing job of balancing her own right. spirituality with her ethical practice. And I think it's really important that I'm hoping that there's enough support from members who are believing members, as well as people who have left the church, to support Natasha in this endeavor, because it matters to everyone. This isn't just about people who may not agree with the church's stance on purity culture. This affects everyone who's a member of the church, and yeah. being able to have an outlet that's healthy and supportive. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys so much. We'll have you guys back, okay? And we're going to have you guys on Mormon Stories this week, okay? Hey guys, here comes Natasha, everybody. Jeremy, how's it going, man? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind being on camera? <laughs> Um, how is she doing? So it's been a really emotional day. She, um, she's been processing very heavily, uh, the day, um, lots of tears, some anger, lots of sadness, some acceptance. It looks like something's happened. Because isn't she supposed to be in there right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Stop. I'm Cindy. I work for Natasha. Oh. Casey and I, she's in the back corner. Would you just, you're loud. Would you just, we have a notebook we'd like everybody to sign so we can make sure we get thank yous to everyone that's come to support. Okay. Would you just announce that Casey's back there to have everybody go? Just take turns. Okay, everyone. I've just been told that uh, there's a notebook in the back. Uh, where everyone can sign and just kind of let Natasha know you were here to support her. So throughout the evening, if you guys could all work your way back and uh, sign that, that piece of paper, I think Natasha would really appreciate it. Right in the corner whenever you get a sec. Thanks guys. So it looks like, it looks like um, something has happened with Natasha at the entrance. Um, there are, the witnesses are still standing outside the church and um, they have not gone in as was planned. And Natasha is consulting with some of her close friends, Clinton, Jenny Martin, and uh, one other person consulting with them. I know that uh, we discussed um, you know, Natasha, I know that Natasha felt really strongly about being able to bring her uh, cell phone in, not to record, actually. Um, Natasha stated that her plan is not to record, but she did want to bring her phone in to be able to read from it, read notes, etc. So it's possible that um, that, that was an issue, but, um, it be, you know, because I don't think she was able to print out uh, the things that she wanted to say. So it's possible that that's what they're discussing. But I am surprised that they haven't gone in yet because it's past time for them to go in. So they're deliberating. And we will see. Um, we will see what they end up doing. 
Uh, there's a nice crowd here. Does anybody want to share? Anybody want to come share why they're here to support Natasha? Anybody? And we may pull you out at any time, depending on what happens. Yeah, yeah. Maybe stand over on this side where the sun's like. Yeah, no, come on over. Come on over, because this is, this is both of us. We're helping. Uh, um, yeah, August. Is this good, John? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> August of 2019, we attended a seminar, a Thrive Weekend that John and Natasha put on, and uh, it changed our lives. It helped us so much. It helped our marriage. It helped us raise our kids. It helped us way you can imagine. You know, it was, uh, it was fantastic. We, we, the Thrive Day we attended later that year, again, heard her speak, heard you speak. It was uh, it just so much wonderful words, openness, and healing have been shared, and, and we just couldn't thank Natasha enough for her doing what she's doing for being as transparent as she is and honest and open and teaching everyone this, you know, it's been fantastic. She, she is really a, great. she is a asset to this church and I really hope that she can find peace with whatever happens because she is so loved and so, so needed. And we just, we didn't feel we could do anything but just show up and find support. So, and we bring love from all of our other fry, Thrive friends that we met that that weekend, and all the love from them um, we bring with us as well. So, yeah, we just want to support her as much as possible. So you're here from where? From Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But so, yeah. yeah. Love that we're here. So we love. Thank you, you so much for coming. Yes, yes thank yeah. you. Yeah, you guys take care. Thanks. <laughs> All right, everyone.
blessings. And that's just one example of how the church and these men who are in charge are taking our spirituality and making decisions about it when they don't have the power to do that. And um, I had some, yeah, so when they are kind men, which sometimes they are, then that's fine. And when they're not, that's not fine. But why is your spirituality dependent on somebody else? That's why I'm here to support Natasha. I don't think it's right that they can take away her membership. I don't think it's right that they can take away Temple Recommends. Thank you so much, Liesl. Thank you. Sorry, I was not prepared. Somebody else like to speak? Hi, Bridget. Hi, Bridget. Hi, John. Thank you for everything that you do. Um, I don't know Natasha, but I have children. And the shame and the guilt that are so much a part of the sexual education and the purity culture and the chastity requirements of the church are something that I hope my children are never exposed to. And I'm so grateful to Natasha for the work that she has done and continues to do in normalizing things that are healthy and appropriate. And um, John, I'm grateful to you for the platform that you give to others. And I appreciate this opportunity and I appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I just uh, wanted to add my voice. I'm a mental health counselor in Indiana. Um, I work with a lot of people, a lot of children, teenagers who are struggling with uh, their sexuality. Um, they need support. They need evidence-based practice. The messages they receive confuse and hurt them. And when they finally have someone there to support them and tell them that they are loved, they are good, and they are worthy, it changes their lives. Um, so just one more person to stand up for. Natasha, who's been standing up for quite a long time for this. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks so much, friends. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi. Um, my name is Brooke Small. I am a mental health counselor in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Thanks for what you do. Yeah, I am here because what I do matters. And it means so much to all of us that engage in it with our hearts and our souls into it. And I'm here today in support of Natasha, but I'm also here today in support of our profession. And our ability to view our profession within the ethical guidelines of that profession and to not have it interfere with our faith or have our faith interfere with what we do. People need to know that they are not fundamentally flat, that they are good and they are worthy. If we are not able to do that, then we are not able to do the job that we have trained so well. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Oh. I was one of Natasha's faculty members here oh, at Prince University. Prince University. Also did her uh, postgraduate. Oh, that's coming. so great. Thank you for coming. Oh, I wanted to be here. We've been out of town. I missed all these events. So I felt so badly about not being in touch with school. But so I've signed the cards and, and left. I'll be in touch with it. The difficulty is that I, I have a family commitment at 8 30 after, and my car is right here. Oh, you can go. I just hate to disrupt it. Oh, don't you. So you'll be this one will be, 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 be So I've, I've visited the folks from all over the country. They've introduced me to you. Thank you. So oh, I appreciate the support that you can give. Okay. Sorry for the experience you went through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great you could be here. It's so nice for you to come for Natasha. Okay. I hope she can see that you're here. 
Well, I just don't want to disrupt. This is obviously. Oh, don't, don't worry. I don't want to. I don't want to tear yeah. that boundary at all. So I'm going to pull out and go yeah. right at this. Yeah. Okay, that's not a problem okay. at all. That's, that's, that's not, not a problem. Thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Hey, hey. Yes. What? Hmm. I'm not even sure if that's the problem. We'll have to see. We'll see. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. So everyone, just giving you an update. Um, we're here uh, to support Natasha for Parker. There's a really beautiful crowd here. Um, and uh, Natasha is still outside She's still outside the building. So she's consulting with uh, Clinton Jenny Martin and some other friends over by the tree. And at the entrance to the stake center are the witnesses. But uh, Natasha's not in the building. And we're still all wondering what's going on and why. I guess it's possible that the witnesses are speaking first and that Natasha's um waiting for each witness to read their statement before natasha goes in um so that's a possibility as well um but for now we have natasha outside on a tree and a lot of people uh several of the witnesses standing outside the building so um so anyway uh we appreciate um, we appreciate you guys tuning in and showing your support for Natasha. Um, does anybody else want to share uh, your support for Natasha? Does anybody else would like to say hi? Would you like to? Okay, come stand right here. Yeah, but I thought you might be interested in this. What's that? Um, about an hour ago, the baby steak started running. A thing on. Come see, come see us this night. Oh, fun! So, <laughs> oh, I, they're doing social media. So I thought someone might find that. So it looks like the Derby Steak is running a Facebook ad uh, yeah. in coordination with this event, yeah. so that if people search for Derby I'll Steak, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll okay, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Come closer. Come closer. Hi, everyone. Suzanne Scribner. I actually live in the borders of the Derby, Kansas State. You're in the state. I have lived around here all my life. I was here with the Wichita State before they split it, and it became the Derby State and the Wichita State. And I just happened to notice because for some reason, probably not after tonight, I got signed up as a, no longer being a member to get a notices on Facebook from the Derby, Kansas State. And they are running an ad about an hour ago. It's only about seven minutes long, but when you click on it, let me get it back up again. It's it says in the description, "Come and see this night as we answer." Now, why did it disappear? I don't know why it's doing this because, you know, I am talking live. So why would we want to cooperate? One more time, come see this night as we answer some of the deepest questions out your soul. You would not want to miss this event. Hashtag open arms. Now, I know Natasha has said that she does not want this to be about Steve Daly, that he's just doing as he's been instructed or what other state presidents and bishops and branch presidents have been told to do. And I just want people to know that I intentionally, after the November 15th policy, made sure I was at church because I wanted to hear what was said from the podium. And for some reason, he was in the branch that my that I reside in. And he got up, and his talk was just basically reading 3 Nephi 27, where it talks about God not being able to abide any sin at all and getting, you know, repent and getting your stuff together. It was one of the hardest talks I have. It wasn't really a talk, it was just reading scripture. 
to ever have sat through without getting up and leaving. Um, I'm in there hoping to get something to help me feel better about that policy and instead felt more out and not wanted than I had ever felt up to that point in my life. The state president has also, at least as of the time that I resigned my membership, told all the bishops and branch presidents that when they interview the youth, that they are to ask, and I'm sorry for saying these words, the youth when about masturbation and when they last watch pornography. I do not find this acceptable behavior from the state president. The, he's very conservative and I just feel like people need to stand up to him and tell him the way he is handling things is not appropriate and he, people would think higher of him if he would just stand up to church leadership and say this is wrong, I'm not going to do it. But I'm here tonight. I think very highly of Natasha. She has spoken about things that I've personally either witnessed or experienced. And I want to see the right thing done. She should never have been called to this disciplinary council. And I want to be here, let her know that I have her back. She is so genuine. And no matter what happens tonight, as far as I'm concerned, she will always be the Mormon therapist. And as Sam Young would put it, she will do what she can to heal these people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, everyone, I just got uh, official news from the witnesses that it is indeed true that uh, Natasha tried to bring her phone in. She has already signed an agreement not to record. She had no intention of recording. Uh, there were people available offering her support in recording. She was very, very uh, committed and steadfast about not recording, but she did not print out her notes. And so, um, so she had all the notes of what she wanted to say on her phone, but they told her that she could not enter into the building with a phone. So that is the uh, current situation. So Natasha's over there by a tree consulting with Clint Jenny Martin and another friend. Uh, also, I've been told that the witnesses were told they would not be able to testify, um, even though they came, some of them from other states. And I think there's some sort of negotiation going on to see if the council is going to continue or not, if they can find her a device to read her notes from, um, and if the witnesses are even going to be given a chance to testify at all at this point. So a little bit of chaos, um, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of confusion, and uh, it'll be interesting to see, but we weren't expecting that. Did you want to speak? All right, come over here, Lisa. Come over here. Hi, Lisa. Hi, John. Thank you for putting Natasha's story on just a few days ago on Mormon Stories podcast, because that's where I really empathize and heard about the pain that Natasha's going through. So I drove down from Cheyenne this morning. That's so nice. Um, yeah, this is cruel. It's just cruel. And all the chaos and is even more cruelty added upon cruelty. I've experienced some of it myself. Um, I resigned my membership. I'm in the clump of memberships that haven't been taken care of though through Quit Mormon. So that was a year ago that I submitted my resignation. Over a year now. What has Natasha meant to you? Natasha, I have heard her on um, your podcast and in combination when you have panel discussions. And I just appreciate that she's thinking outside of the parameters because this is a discovery that I've made, being born and raised a Mormon. The parameters that we were given and always taught right, wrong, this is all there is. And that just wasn't working for me to really believe those parameters about every aspect of our lives anymore. So that she was able to speak 
coherently, em empathetically um, to difficult topics, um, to offer something for emotional, mental, human relations uh, that's not being offered through just being a member of a religion has been very meaningful and I've learned from her. I'm very grateful from what I've learned from her studies and her experience and I just wanted you to know that's why I'm here today. I appreciate her, that I love her, that I understand this is a very cruel thing that's being done and perpetrated upon another person. And I don't agree with it. It's not love. That's so nice of you to come all the way from Cheyenne, Wyoming to support Natasha. I just felt like I needed to be here. I just really wanted and needed to be here. So thanks for letting us all know yeah. that it was happening. That's the least we could do. Yeah. That's the least we could do. Okay. Thanks, Thank Lisa. You. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I got Come on in. Come on over. Hello. Come forward a little bit if you don't mind. Okay, perfect. Just so they can hear you. What would you like to All say? Right. Well, I'm here to support Natasha. Um, I appreciate her genuineness, her integrity, her knowledge, um, her ethics. And I think, you know, the what I've read of hers and heard of hers, it resonates with me. She cares for people. And um, I think the church should show more care for her. Um, Where are you from, if you uh, want to say? Texas. Oh, okay. Did yeah. you come from Texas? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All the way today. from Texas? Yep, yeah, five hours in the car. Holy moly. It's a lot easier to drive without kids yelling at you, so yeah. it wasn't too bad. <laughs> you drove from Texas. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's amazing. So well, thank I'll say you. Hi to my kids. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, hi guys. Uh, looks like Natasha and Jenny are lying down uh, on the grass, um, just waiting for uh, to hear back. And the witnesses are still outside. Um, kind of waiting and it's all kind of been stalled and here's the crowd all kind of hanging out just one sec just one sec that's not part of the contract she was not going to give them her phone <laughs> <laughs> well, let, me, let me stick around. Wait. Can you can you start over? For, can you just start over? <laughs> Sorry. And, and maybe so. And so I can I can restate, but maybe I'll start with the phone and then do the thing again. Yeah. So Sorry right guys. Phone, Sorry right? guys. Let's not only restate, but then also just just give the audience just tell them who you are and your relationship to Natasha as well. Okay. And, that and then work. rehash for the Mormon stories um, podcast yeah. audience. Okay. Um, my name is Paul. Um, I am a member of the church. Um, I attend in Manhattan, Kansas. Um, I've known Natasha now for two years. Um, I am a client of Natasha's. Um, we can attest to the fact that um, in many ways the church has failed, has failed me um, as an individual. Um, I have um, struggle with some issues that I'm not going to go into great detail with at all because I think there's a personal need, but um, various church leaders have failed me and um, some of the issues that I'm dealing with and working out with Natasha. Um, and we have a pretty strong relationship and have gotten to know each other um, a lot over the last couple of years. And it was important for me to be here um, because Natasha, to me, is a mental health professional that has helped me sort through some things and helped me um, begin to unravel some things that I would never be able to do without the help of a qualified, competent mental health professional. Um, 
and it's really disheartening and frustrating um, to me that there are many members of the church who have issues um, that might require the help of a qualified mental health professional. Um, and the church is essentially saying that Natasha's expertise is not welcome here, that Natasha's work as a mental health professional who specializes um, in various forms of therapy, including marriage and family therapy, um, that her stances and positions are just not relevant or appreciated. And What can you tell our audience about what's going on? And so, and what's going on right now is um, Natasha was going to begin her, um, her council meeting and um, when they first approached the door, um, two of her witnesses who were um, active members of the church who actually attended church today, um, someone told them they had to step outside because they were not allowed to use the restroom. They just wanted to use the bathroom and they would not allow them in to use the bathroom. And it just kind of really upset Natasha. It was disheartening to her. Um, it did not make any sense at all to her. Um, and when she finally went into the room, um, they asked her to please um, give them her phone. And she had prepared all of her remarks and she had prepared her um, um, thoughts because she, she knew and was concerned she'd get emotional and disorganized and she wanted to have those ready and available to her on her phone. And she decided that she was not going to give that up. Um, she just didn't feel comfortable going into a room where she's emotionally um, vulnerable um, and might lose her train of thought. And she just, she just wasn't going to do that. She was not going to be subject to that kind of control um, by her local leaders. And she just wanted to have the dignity of being able to reference her notes. Um, they had not um, told her this in advance. They had, she had asked her in multiple writings. And if, and, and if you go to her Facebook page and Mormon stories and see all the posts, Natasha's been 100% transparent with everything that's happening. Um, and nothing they ever sent her said, you would have to surrender your phone. Um, she was willing to sign and did sign an agreement as well as her witnesses that she would, that everything would be done in confidence, that um, there would be no recordings, that she was not going to record. Um, Natasha is a woman of integrity. She's good to her word. Um, she was not going to do anything untoward with her phone but they decided that she wasn't going to enter unless, unless they could hold her phone for her. Um, and for Natasha, that was not negotiable. It's her, it's her personal property and it's her personal right to have her phone. Um, and that was pretty much the, the main thing that she disagreed with. So did, do you have a sense for whether there might be people who think that her intent was to record the disciplinary council. I can say as a personal witness that there was right. zero intention. I was in because... Natasha's home today for hours and and it was um, it was inspiring to listen to her talk and to see her emotions. She has every intent to retain her membership in the church. She's a valuable person to the church and there was nothing nothing today throughout the day when I was in her home that indicated that she had any intention to record anything. And I do remember at times in discussions in the home, she even told other people who were there, um, I expect everyone to respect the fact that we're going to sign this and no one, nobody is going to record anything. Um, and that's what she expected. Um, and so there's the church has no worry about that. <laughs> all right, Paul. So, yeah, just, just a lot of follow-up questions, and, and I'm sure they're all around. So what is the current status of the council? Do you know? Are they moving I, forward with it? I'm not sure what the status is. I do know that Natasha wants to come over and talk, but she wants to also respect the people that came to talk for her and on her behalf. And so she was, she's trying to, you know, calm down. She's emotional. I mean, this is a big deal, um, and so she was going to speak to her witnesses before she would come over and address the podcast or the crowd. Um, 
but she's in a good place. Um, she's she is disappointed. Um, she's disappointed that um, the, that the church is so untrustful that they won't allow her to have her phone, and that they're so controlling um, that they won't allow her to have her phone um, during the meeting. So, just just maybe for some housekeeping and, and clarification. Does the church, and you may not know this, and, and we could ask others, but does the church keep record of these um, membership council meetings via the stake executive secretary? I mean, the church, I would imagine, it keeps some record. Yeah, so um, they're re either recording or taking notes. I have never been in a in a council meeting like this. Um, it's my understanding that they are not recorded, um, and I would assume that uh, people do take notes, but there's no recording as far as I'm. So, Do you guys want to give us an update? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Come on over, Come on over <laughs> You were there. Screw over. Hey, okay. guys. There's an update if you guys want to come here. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Does this even work? Yeah. This, that's, this for, that's a part. Like, all right. So um, they would not let Natasha go in. She had her notes on her cell phone. They wanted to take her phone away. Uh, so she refused. And uh, anyway, then they wouldn't let the witnesses go in. So we're basically done here. They've asked the police to escort us off the property so we can see the police cars are showing up. <laughs> so anyway, they can, they're showing their colors. Um, the place that we're going to go is called, Jenny, I'm not from here. I'll tell you. I'll tell you where we're going. We're going to Keeper of the Plains. Like planes, the pioneers crossing the plains, keeper of the plains. That's where we're going to go. You can follow that green Subaru. That's Natasha. She'll be in that. Um, keeper of the plains, and Natasha will tell us kind of everything that's going on and her feelings on the matter. So that's the story. Keeper of the plains is where we're going. It's downtown somewhere. She said Google it. You'll be easy. How many minutes away? It's probably about 30 minutes away. Keeper of the plains. Can you find that? If you Google it, it says Keeper of the Plains North Parking. Is that good? Okay. Thanks yeah. for for that update. Yeah. And just, so, just anyway, for those of you who are... So, yeah, it uh, looks like they need, like, five police cars because they're so uh, afraid of us. Membership Council for Natasha Helfer has essentially been canceled for the night. Uh, the so they've canceled, uh, they've canceled the disciplinary council. There are at least three police cars um, on the property. Here's the police, and they're now they're now escorting us off the property. Uh, there's the third police car. There's the policeman, and it looks like the disciplinary council has been canceled. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop the live stream for now, and thank you all for joining us. And what we'll do is when we convene with Natasha later, um, we are going to hear her story and kind of hear what's been going on. Uh, maybe before we end, we'll just kind of show, show the crowd one more time and uh, show everybody here. People are kind of disappointed. And um, sorry, sorry, things didn't turn out quite like we thought, but we all love you, Natasha. Thanks to everyone who showed up to support. And um, if you guys want to check back in about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we'll do another live stream. Thanks, everybody. You guys take care. Love you. Love you, Natasha. And love uh, everyone who's shown up to support. Take care.